into the scene one could read many a lovely tale. If somebody wrote a biography of Winston Churchill, could you call that fiction about fiction? And if you wrote a review of it, would that be fiction about fiction about fiction? And why don't we have a genre for fiction about fiction? They're doing what a prequel for the Game of Thrones, which is fiction about fiction. The Middle Ages is all fiction. Greco-Roman history is all fiction. Fascinating, isn't it? It's like the end of the world as you know it. It was like, there was kind of like an end of the world. And then there's like an end of the world. It's not the edge of the flat earth. It's sort of the edge of the bullshit. And you realize, what do you have left when you strip the world of all of its lies? If you turned off the electrical power of it all, the mesmerizing power, because people are like walking um, scramblers. I like walking scramblers. I mean, you'll see me when someone walks by, you can see how, like, I have to stop talking. You can't talk like this in front of them or around them. There aren't great campuses where people are sitting down and cogitating over the actual ethical proportions of our existence. It just isn't happening. It isn't happening. Everything's skin deep, except for the fucking pharmaceuticals, right? And if everything's skin deep, except for the pharmaceuticals, what do you have left? And I've seen these white middle-aged people. I've listened to them tell stories about how their mother or father was killed in the hospital by malpractice. And they don't care because the, they kept the faith to the end. You know? Oh, they just gave her too many drugs. I don't know why. I've heard this conversation. You know. That's the way it goes. Yeah, they did this. She's talking like a fucking nurse. Like, it's all clinical. It's like, you know, hey, mom was old. Stuff happens to old people. You know? Or in the words of one doctor I knew, don't ever go to a hospital, whatever you do. Try to avoid them as much as you possibly can. A wise person will avoid a hospital. I, I got off my addiction to hospitals. I'd been seriously hurt at one point in my life, about which I've probably talked very much, depending on how long you've been listening to this YouTube station channel. And, uh, you end up with different, all different kinds of injuries that the medical system does not treat. That's all. They, people say, oh, we've got this, we've got child services, we've got this, we've got this. It doesn't do shit. We're not, we're not dealing with people here. They split up. Whatever competence there is, is categorized out of, out of all competence. No. The only time any fucking functionary knows more than three instruments is when they're flying a jumbo jet. Otherwise, it's just this kind of lying, that kind of lying, and that kind of lying. Oh, why does it cost this much? Well, I've entered into an agreement of a sort of metaphysical nature where I have to pay a certain cartel or cabal of people about whom I know little and whose designs upon every aspect of our society I know even less. And so I have to get some from you as well. But if you're smart, you'll get some from the next guy, and it all works really well that way. That's the world. You better accept it. Yes, I know you're only three years old, but that's the way it is, son. I gotta take a little bit from you, because they take a little bit from me. But it's okay, because we got some powerful stories all over the place. Really, just go to it, telling us why that's actually amazing. And you'll learn to love it, just like the McDonald's hamburger, which is made of people. I wish the McDonald's or Burger King had, you know, three and a half people go into every one of our burgers. Wow, I'm getting a lot of people power there. How many people does it take to make a hamburger? Oh, it takes five, six, seven, eight, plus one. And I don't think you could be cynical enough about civilization. All the good people, they always come out. You always meet the one, the decent ones, eventually. They're out there, doing different stuff. They're not necessarily living in a quagmire of, of, of personal self-hatred, self-doubt, and, and infinite neurosis like I am. They're doing many more notable and noble things, I'm sure. But the point is that they're out there, and I sit in my living daycare talking to one of the great chiefs who helps preside over these sacred lands.
Because thankfully, like the clouds still move, there are people who still honor this good earth. And I'd like to learn to live like one of them. That's my church. People have been living in systems so long, they, you know, they talk like the systems ideas are theirs. Like it was their idea to think and not think about the incredible array of things they think and do not think about, or do not th think worthy of thinking about. I grew up, I was very observant, and when I was very young I started making comedy tapes. You know, uh, when, I could, when I could move to video I did, I'd snort cocaine and give the news announcements uh, when I was like, uh, I don't know how old I was, 16, 17, whatever. And uh, I preferred the stuff I did on cassette tape, audio tape. And I really had fun with it. My dad was never interested. My parents were never interested in anything I was doing. You know, I exhibit all kinds of above average intelligence and aptitudes. But I really liked entertaining myself. That's what I really enjoyed. And uh, one night we were sitting at home. My Uncle Bob was at the table. My dad, who's a sociopath, Alan, was sitting there. And he says, hey, Landon, you should show Uncle Bob your tape. It's really funny. Well, my dad didn't care about what I'd done. My dad didn't care about anything about me. What he cared about was that I was useful and could be entertaining. So I said no. And I'm sure my Uncle Bob was offended or hurt in some way. And I was very shy. There was no reason for them to expect me to enjoy that type of thing. They didn't know me at all, and my Uncle Bob never did get to know me. They're just not a warm people that way. Warm, just not overly warm. So as I got older through writing, I carried on my inner life. And what you're seeing today is just a man who's been talking to himself his whole life, that's all, and who's observant. Just watching the people around me. They seem to be in a lot of stress. They seem to be really busy. They never seem to be able to pay their bills, even though they made a good amount of money. And my mom and dad hated each other. My dad was abusing my money, mother on, the, on their wedding day. My mom says that her wedding day was one of the worst days of her life. And when I listen to her, because nobody ever has, I can understand why. I don't know how a being can go through all these people and it happens every day, and nobody gives a fuck about them. So when I say sociopaths don't actually give a fuck about people, I know what I'm talking about. I know that many viewers will perhaps understandably go, how could you possibly say that? People care. I care about people. Do you? How would I know? Because I've spent my life around white people, and I've never, I haven't met very many who actually give a fuck about anybody. And because I'm not comfortable with that, I don't live around them. I avoid them as much as possible. Right? That's not good for your mind to be around. Right? And I noticed my professors, whether they were flirting with my classmates or whether they were removing masculinity from their classrooms or all the weird fucked up shit they were doing. You know, this weird feminist, uh, what was her name? Nobody liked her. If you go on, uh, you go on and check all the, the feedback she's got, nobody has ever fucking likes her. Except, like, the feminist dykes. You don't like her. And uh, she dresses like a fucking prostitute. You know, like a mannequin from Sears in the 1980s. But somebody gave her a PhD in literature. Can you imagine what that PhD sounds like? I've read a PhD of a professor. Oh, oh people, you do not want to read one of these. You will be very sad, sadly disappointed. It's just who they give PhDs to and what these things actually look like. Now I had a decent professor of Milton and I'm pretty sure his PhD would be actually quite worth reading. There are some, like anywhere, there are some you know, smart professors and there are a lot of really stupid ones. Because you can, you can get into any job if you're a sociopath. Nobody tells you that, but it's true. You can get along, you can join the local lacrosse team, you can fucking coach the hockey team, and as long as you get to go away to Vegas and bang a few hookers once a year, everything's fucking primed and ready to go. Because even, you know, these men, for instance, what do they do with all this excess testosterone that they have? Yeah. They're just burning inside of them. I don't have time to, to go through the, the people I've known. I know I've been saying that a lot lately. I think because I'm sort of changing gears. 
you know, a lot of my uh, writing life was based on anecdotal experiences and recounting them, and I certainly have, need very little occasion to, to recount many of the different scenes from my life. And I think there's a place in time that that could be quite useful, but mostly I just think everyone's a sociopath. Mostly. And it doesn't mean that they're, they're a knuckle-dragging sociopath, but there are different flavors of them. And I think if more people started accounting for sociopathic personality and its different types, maybe finding ones that you like, you get along with, ones that you don't. Or if you've noticed, like I have, or my mom, for instance, they're a sociopath that just take an instant dislike to you. They can't get you out of their office fast enough. Right? One of the things I learned most deeply and acutely, hurtfully, if you will, growing up between the age of, say, 10 and 20, is that something about my intelligence threatened my father. It wasn't just that he was disinterested in me, but that he was actually threatened uh, by the mere suggestion, like the hum of, of one of our transformers, of someone who could perform normal ethical reasoning and could continue to remember things because my dad would talk over things like they didn't happen. He would do things, he expected to be able to do them with impunity. Like hit my wife, hit my mother, I almost said my wife, hit his wife. And do you think her brothers or her father or anyone did anything? And the only one in her family that ever sounded any alarm was the one woman in my mom's family who was treated the worst. Isn't that fascinating how white people treat the honest kind of person? Because these Christians, right? Nobody's honest. Christians are not honest. Morning. If you've heard me talk about Christians before, you know what I think of them. Um, Christians are not and never honest. It's not even about like, hey, maybe they could actually be honest. Like The whole religion is about being a sociopath and a homosexual. That, that's what the whole religion is for. If you want to know how to be a sociopath, read the Bible. Be a Christian. Be any kind of Christian. Because these days you get people who like, they don't care about the Bible anymore. I've even had one sociopath I was like, like, Jesus, and doesn't your religion based upon you? Oh, Jesus, she laughs like, didn't really dismiss it, but she knows something much deeper than Jesus. She's beyond Jesus. But she's still Christian. <laughs> you know, you can do anything you want with Christianity. You can be any kind of Christian you want. My dad was all the Christian he needed to be because he got to be a sociopath. And underneath the appetites of the Christian is the appetite of the sociopath, the animal of the deeper type of energy and intelligence or the seething mass of, of developmental arrest that's in the brain. And what's left is a cortex that can just rationalize anything. And that's all most people are doing is just rationalizing all the parts of their life that they could never possibly account for with even the least amount of scrutiny of what they're actually doing because people make a huge amount of commitments to work and watch the football game but they never really question, most people, the, their investment in it, the investment they've made. And to those of us who have moral reasoning, we go, well, maybe if they were just adequately acquainted with the actual costs of the investment they're making, that we need, you know, every sound mind that we can get to bring the kind of scrutiny that needs to come to bear upon a world that will actually literally just shrivel away if we were to do so <laughs> in a day, right? It just would shrivel away. And that, that's kind of, at the end of all of the, the, the machinations of the world, it's actually just this really feeble fucking parasite that would just shrivel away. We've, we've made ourselves weak and vulnerable to this worm, this global sociopathy. You think you're ever going to know how the Illuminati works? You think you're going to know what they're up to next? Because no matter what you look at, it, it might be better just to say that anything that can be lied about has been. The Game of Thrones is fiction about fiction, right? I wonder who the scribe was that got to write the fiction about fiction. The Talmud of the entertainment world. You know? I've only ever watched like a half hour, and in that time I saw about a hundred different types of violence and suggested violence and simulated violence. Every kind I could imagine, and many I hadn't thought of before. 
that's the Middle Ages, isn't it? Isn't it the place of torture, the time of torture, the Dark Ages, right? The Middle Ages, Dark Ages. Most people, I think, use those interchangeably, right? And it's during that ghost time. The ghost time is between 500 and 1500, right? And all of a sudden the Renaissance starts, right? But they just added a thousand years. <laughs> the Renaissance actually started in 500, not 1500. And there was something that happened. There was an end to a way of life, I think, for many people on the earth. And this way of life is what crept up on top of it. So what we're living in is like, a, like living in the cortex of a sociopath where all of the major decisions are being made from far deeper down in the mind. It's kept buried and wrapped in the folds of the, of the strictly autonomic, you might say, or the subconscious. So that Darren Brown, right, uh, uh, English, I don't know, magician, he could send people into a shopping uh, supermarket and actually tell you exactly where they were going to go, exactly what aisles they were going to go down. Because he simply programmed their minds to do that. And you're just watching, oh, that's entertaining, isn't it? I wonder how Darren Brown does that. Because we're all just waiting to be told what to do on a daily basis. I think I'm going to move into I'm going to move into this career. I think I might be able to prey on people better. I'm having a nervous breakdown. I think I'm going to get a loan and become a life coach and tell people how they can become better business people because I've had so many different businesses, but actually I haven't because I live with a woman who's saying that and she never had a business in her life. She's lying. But she's got a big loan to pay for and now she's got to she's got to get that business dollar. You know, people starting businesses, they have money. It was very hard for me throughout my life to speak in more generalities to understand what values the sociopaths around me actually had. I, I, I thought, do we speak the same language? It just seems to me like, forget the world. Like The people around had such wonderful and pure aspirations. Why was it necessary for them to sexually harass me, physically threaten me, you know, things like that, get in my face for small offenses like not saying hello to them at a, loudly enough or or looking at them the wrong way or just not fulfilling their requirements for someone who could be excused from being used as an object for their barbaric propensities and appetites all of which are communicated as though completely justified and re re reversing all accountability upon the victim. I mean, you're an animal living among these animals all your life. Yeah, you get pretty cynical. You get pretty cynical. And magnified through my own family and hundreds of hours of interviews with my mother, uh, as much as I could get with other family members, none of whom have the, have the least sensibility of anything that is like a normal value system in my life. That was an eagle. None of whom, like, I don't understand their values. If, if I talk to a sociopath, you try to find out their values, it doesn't make any sense. What do they actually care about? Ask yourself that when you talk to a sociopath. What do they actually care about? If they weren't lying, if they couldn't feast on lies every day, what would they care about? And, you know, they'll often have wonderful belief systems, very elaborate, all like a lovely lies, wonderful lies. And I've, I've, I've had lies too, I've had belief systems. But I had a core desire and a hunger that remained because I wanted to know more about the world. And eventually I had to let those cults go. Because my hunger draw me forth and drew me forth. And by and large, as, as I moved onto the horizon of my life, I found, you know what, I don't think there's going to be very many people in it. Because every time I come together with people, they show a, a blatant disregard for what I would consider basic human values. They don't care about people. I find it hard. I don't know how you can work for a living and care about your children. You must be super parents, like the policemen who can, who can be judge and jury just by looking at you. you. Must be super parents. You're either super parents or sociopaths. That's all anyone can be, right? And I have a recent example of that, which I'm not going to give, but. You ever just look, look, look go to your local, uh, when the kids, the Pee Wee uh, lacrosse teams, and listen, listen to them practice? Right? They're learning to be fucking soldiers, hit each other, get used to being physically tackled and hit. 
I also remember the uh, two friends I had in elementary school who both entered lacrosse and how aggressive they became. Speaking of the police, the police car just went by. I wonder if we'll be treated to a visitation. You never know if I sit here long enough, somebody's gonna call the police. Then it's like, oh, they'll ask for your ID, and it's like, if it happens, I'm saying for the record, I'm pretty much someone more inclined to just go along with it. You get, the idea is to get rid of them as quickly as possible. You know, these are drones. These are robots. They, they're, you know, there's not a lot of room for creativity. I remember once, uh, it was actually the last year, there was a, a meth addict. They like to take off their clothes and just lay down. I was laying at the beach and there was a man and two kids and a young woman uh, by herself who uh, were feeling a little threatened and uh, they thought they'd like to call the police. So I said, okay. And I didn't really want to call anyone, but they did. And I was talking on the phone with them. And because it was a hard access point, I said, look, I'll run up to the main road so the RCMP guy needs to know where to, where to come. And they said, sure. And they got my name. Da -da -da -da. And, you know, I walked up there, and eventually, the police officer, I was waving my hands on one road, he didn't see me, then came around another access point, saying, oh, okay, he walks up to me, doesn't say hello, he ignores me, and then just looks me in the eye and says, are you the guy, who, are you the guy they called about? And I said, no. So he just assumed, right, that I was the, uh, the meth addict, just to look at me, because they don't, they don't like long hair in this area, right? Didn't say sorry. I said no. You have you can't take these guys personally, right? Because they're just they're literally just big, stupid morons. They're just big, stupid morons. These are they're big, stupid morons. That's what they are. I mean, there should be a clinical word for it. That's what paramilitary people are. Police are big, fucking stupid, but amazing liars, right? And the best liars they they're the ones that get promoted. And it's all. It's just it's a racket. It's a racket with badges and numbers and costumes and special words. And uh, and they, every now and then they, they get to kill people or arrest people or be uh, uh, neglect their duty. You hear stories all the time: poor investigations, no investigations. As long as somebody gets banged up, right? I was watching a video this morning of a uh, RCMP pulling a guy over with a dash cam for no reason, of course, sees the dash cam and he starts to pretend as so though the whole reason he pulled, pulled them over is because he wanted to talk about his dash cam. You know, just an obvious liar. But you could listen to how friendly he was, this Asian RCMP officer in Vancouver. So friendly, right? They can just talk to you, be friendly, but also be lying at the same time. That's what sociopaths have to be able to do. And you can train people to do that. I actually don't have any idea on me now that I think about it. Another thing about people, you know, police or not, is that they disturb your mind because they're living in a total mind field, a very different mind field than the average person. And uh, the police officer, in a sense, is the apotheosis of the working man because now he's attained to paramilitary force in the society. Um, the priest, um, uh, the uh, the corporate pedophile. This is this is essentially all anyone is working to become if they see their life their life's purpose to advance in their various careers. And they will never get beyond a certain point if they're not capable of, of extraordinary kinds of sociopathy. But they're immersed in it, by and large, in the daily society. It's all a racket, all a lie from beginning to end. There's not a man or woman who's looked up at the sky and seen the truth. You know, he's lived in a fantasy, stretched over the mind, stretched around the earth, like an envelope right, that uh, has a commanding interest in what's happening in the sky and in the earth, 
and in that country and that country and how good it all is no matter how many people are hurt. I'm just going to take a break now for a second because I've been going on this strain for a while. Listen to these lovely birds. To be peaceful. I, I'm lucky, so we should say I'm lucky. You know, a police officer hasn't approached me for sitting here with my camera, so that's good. You can see the video online of a guy, like not unlike me, long hair, sitting in a park somewhere and a member of the local community coming up to him and accusing him of being a drug dealer. <laughs> you know, and these, it's an older man, and these older men, they just have nothing better to do. And whatever career they come through, they have this, they have these signs of sociopathy. So they have unprovoked aggression, or they have a debilitating ambivalence combined with the ability to know everything that needs to be known about any situation involving any kind of moral quandary, you know. And that's it. That's how they live. You know, it must be nice to know everything. So as far as, you know, the, the kind of foothold or toehold or uh, being in a good strategic social position that everyone by and large has probably found some way of getting into and we work in a sociopathic world so you had to get your hands a bit dirty to get wherever you are you had to make your way through life i try to make my life as an honest person honest about how he feels honest about why he's living the way they do i have to be careful i have to make videos because i don't get any intellectual stimulation from the local animals because they don't ask me questions and, and things like that so in my life, like if, if I don't, if I didn't write or make videos or talk to myself, I would get no uh, mental stimulation. So I, I, I would probably die at an early age, as most of them do, because they don't get any mental stimulation. They just regurgitate all the incredibly bizarre bullshit that they learn in order to get through life. Right? And when they listen to the CBC or the national radio, they believe it. When they hear that ding dong ding, and they hear certain commercials, they they're just getting they're just ringing their bell all day long, right? And sociopaths are really good at appearing extremely friendly, because if you're not a sociopath, right, you just take it's each situation, you know, you have a good day, you have a bad day, all that kind of stuff. But for a sociopath, they can just put it on no problem at any time. And what they believe and what they don't believe doesn't matter. They're, they love religion. Because when the child's mind is hurt, what do you have left? You have words. The rearranging of words. And by and large, most people don't get as involved with words as I have, as far as just like literally writing words out, not necessarily being the best writer, but, you know, literally just writing things out. And you could stack, you know, 50 dictionaries up and you wouldn't be close to what I've written uh, down on a page. And it's my voice, so it's important, but it doesn't mean it's the most readable material in the world. People don't have to do that, though. By and large, you'll meet them and they just, they learn the right words. some different things up. Oh, that was then, this is now. Talked to one sociopath, I said, oh, you know, I, and, you know, after years and years of knowing him, I got him interested in my Facebook, because he wanted to connect with me, and I made him do all the work, right? <laughs> and, he, and I have a couple, like, fake Facebook accounts I don't really use, I use it for Messenger, but anyway. and he goes on there, and he's, like, reading out my, I guess I have, I have a little motto in there, and it says, a living, breathing, something uh, to do with reconciliation the living, breathing heartbeat of reconciliation. He's like, what's reconciliation? He said, there's no such thing as reconciliation. He said, you know, because the past is the past. There is no past. You think you should, I believe you should leave that in the past, he says to me. It's all about the present and being in the moment. And, uh, I, and we were talking, I said, oh, I wrote something on there, you know, relevant to, you know, something you said the other day, and he never read it. I had, I had, I was a more active Facebook user for a little while. None of these people ever read anything I wrote, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, the biggest story I have is I was writing things about all kinds, very elaborate things. I would start, it would start to become a joke to me because, you know, I was sitting in this one homosexual uh, sociopath's house who I'd gone to high school with and I was writing, and he was into politics and I was writing things on the Facebook account I'd newly created. And I'm sure he was getting notices and I wasn't getting a like for anything. And then I had, I was talking to someone else and they were talking about some stupid shit. Or, or you know, I was reading some other comments and I said, oh, a friend of mine's in the hospital and they're dying. 
or no, I think that she said or something like she had a bad day at the mall and all these people were like, oh, too bad for you, too bad for you. And I said, oh, I've been just a little sad because a friend of mine at the hospital dying and I received not a single comment from anybody. They were, and I just deleted my account. Like these people are all sociopaths. And it was just one of the little instruments I could use. And it just, sociopaths don't care because they're not getting my response from most people. They don't have to deal with people like me very often. So they can, they can, you know, so most people aren't noticing that they don't care. They don't care about anything. They, they care about some things, but it's not like pure care. It's care because it's of use to them to care. It doesn't have to touch their heart tremendously. Or if it doesn't touch that chemical sequence in their mind that says this is heart-centered, then they don't care. I know many uh, sort of new agey types of sort of uh, quasi-witches on Salt Spring Island will go around talking about energy and fairies and being positive and, and being heart-centered and spiritual and connected and compassionate who are pedophiles, like women. And I know that for a fact. You understand what I'm saying? Like, that's what people are like. That's certainly what white people are like. They're crazy. They're out of their fucking mind. And they're, they're just holding on in their brain. Their brain is just literally clawing on. It's hanging on. Their brain is the guy in the movie in Cliffhanger, you know? The seven armed men they used to call their family and their brothers ganging up on them in their mind. The shit that families do to each other to get them ready for the world, to drive trucks for the rest of their life, you know? How many people of mental development could drive a truck? You know, in all fairness to, you know, it's an, ass an admirable occupation, it's hard, you know, balls out to you, man, but why would you do that your whole life? Mile after mile, right? Guy on YouTube, uh, Trucker Josh, got married, back on the road, like, almost the next day. You know, him and his wife, when they are together, seem to be conducting just two related YouTube channels. What else do they do together? Right? One sociopathic woman I knew, she just wanted to have that boyfriend on her Facebook picture. She didn't care whether she, that she didn't care about the guy. But she was extremely mad when he broke up with her. Mad as hell. So, you know, sociopaths have emotions. And they, they often have hard lives. But you'll often not know about it. And they might even be very fond of telling you when they hear about someone having a hard life. It's like, oh, that's no big deal. You just get up, pull yourself up by your, your condom straps, by your fake penis straps, and move on. There's all kinds of ways people are conned into being a part of the world, and it is a con. It's, it's just a con on top of a con on top of a con. Of course it is. And wherever you find yourself, you know, hopefully you found yourself able to withdraw from it politely and carefully, as you should. I knew some people who withdraw their services from the Illuminati and lost their fucking credit cards for the rest of their lives. You have to be careful around everything. 